Yum, yum! Hi everyone, Wukash Pazera from Pixel Fondue here. In this video I'm going to show you the workflow for rigging and animating a character in about 20 minutes using Modo and Auto Character System 3. The model used as an example in this video is Bonnie character created by Ugur Ulvi Yetiskin for Maya, but I'm using a version adapted to Modo by Toma Groppi. First let's check the mesh to see if it's uh, suitable for rigging. So the first thing I see here is my polygon GL count is over 262,000, which seems quite a lot for uh, such mesh. And the reason it's so high is because all the meshes uh, for this character, they have a subdivision level for viewport set to 2. So the render level 2 is fine, that's gonna give you better quality in rendering, but for the viewport, especially for animation, just having a uh, subdivision level on 1 is, is enough. So here I've got it down to 65,000 uh, polygons now, which, which is much better. The next thing I notice is that the character is not really at the center. It's a little bit offset from the origin, so that's that's not good. We're going to put it at the center, the character, quickly. So again, I'm selecting all the meshes. I'm going into the component mode, polygons, is fine. And then in the modeling tool set under edit tab, we've got the center tool. So I'm going to center on X and on Z. We're going to do some more work on, on this, but uh, for now, um, that will be enough. And the last thing to check before importing the rig is to see if the rest pose is fine. So as you can see, the character is in a T pose, so that's perfect. I'm going to use a variation of the rig, of the ACS biped rig that um, supports retargeting. So this one especially requires a T pose, so that's all good. Um, and then I need to uh, see about my limbs and uh, they have to be pre-bent a little bit so both arms and legs need to be a little bit pre-bent so it can't be a straight line because if, if they are straight line IK solver doesn't know which way to bend them so in order to help IK solver work uh, we have to pre-bend uh, limbs a little bit so here you can see it's very slight but it's going to be enough for the IK solver so that's good the arms are good let's uh, have a look at the legs and the leg seems to be, again, very small band here, but that will be enough for the solver uh, to work correctly. It's time to drop the rig now, so I'm going to the um, setup or rigging um, tab, and then I have rig tab here, which has all the ACS tools in it, and I'm going to open the panel with ACS rig presets. And like I said, the one I'm interested in, in, in is the retarget biped um, preset. So that's just a biped rig, but it has this retargeting support, meaning we can import uh, motion capture motion, such as uh, one from Mixamo or from other uh, sources. Right, so we have the rig in, and the first thing you, you can see here is the size difference between those two, between the, the character mesh and the rig. So ACS rig by default is sort of real, real size uh, human, um, uh, around um, one point point eight meters. So I recommend sticking to the real size unless you really know that you want to have some other size for your character. In case of the retargeting, and I have the the motion that I'm gonna retarget um, the skeleton that I'm gonna retarget from already in the scene. So. In case of retargeting, it usually helps if the skeletons, the source and the target skeletons are, are similar in size. So actually what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to scale up the skeleton slightly, the rig slightly up to match the um, the mixum of one even more and then I'm going to scale all the meshes up as well to, to match the rig. So let's do that. I'm going uh, into the guide uh, context and just looking in the front view, um, I have the resize guide tool, which I can use to enlarge the rig. Once I'm happy with the result, I can drop the tool and I apply the guide to the rig. So now when I'm uh, back in the assembly context, the guide has a new size, the rig has a new size. Then I can hide this uh, Mixamo skeleton for now, and now I'm going to um, scale the meshes. So to scale the meshes I'm going to double click um, on the folder with all the meshes. I'm going to go into the component mode, so polygon is fine. I will set my action center to origin and then I will use scale tool 
to make the the mesh bigger and uh, fit the rig a little bit more. Now I'm going to change the structure of the rig a little bit so it fits my character better. So first, I don't really need a Joe uh, module, so I can simply delete it. I also uh, need only three joints in the spine. So this rig, uh, this rig preset comes with four joints in spine by default. So here I'm just gonna select quickly the root item for the entire rig, and then in the properties, uh, it's got the set three joint spine buttons. So I'm going to use it to to reduce the number of joints in spine by one. So now it's gonna be compatible with my mesh. Um, and then I also do not need any of the twist joints because with this sort of mesh, it's, um, it's, it's really just a set of segments. So it's enough if I have just single joint in, in, um, in arm, forearm, upper leg and lo uh, lo uh, lower leg. So let me unfold the modules list here. Just quickly grab the right arm and the left arm modules and set then the arm joints to one here in the item properties. Then set the forearm joints to one. And I will do the same thing for legs. So right and left leg. And again, thigh joints to one. And the shin joints to one. I need to customize fingers and hand a little bit too, because this character, uh, if you can see it only really has three fingers, it's got a thumb, it's got the index finger, and then the rest of fingers are sort of merged into, into one uh, piece. So to reflect that, I only really need three fingers in my rig as well for each uh, hand. So I'll just, I will leave the thumb, I will leave the, leave the index and the middle finger, and then those uh, remaining two I will delete. So again, I'm going to pick the right and left arm modules, and here on their fingers, I will reduce them from four to two. The thumb is a separate setting, as you can see. So in ACS uh, three, uh, the number of fingers concerns only the fingers apart from the thumb. So yeah, so that's that looks to be everything that I had to do to um, to adjust the structure of the rig. It's time for for uh, fitting now, but um, the the retargeting version. Of the, of the biped rig has one peculiar requirement is that the, the root item, you know, or the center of the gravity, this has to be, um, so when I switch to guide mode, just to make it a little bit more apparent, um, it has to be on the uh, X and uh, Z axis at zero. So it can only really move on Y, but it's sort of fixed on, on X and, and on Z. So I can't, when I want to fit um, my character, or fit the rig to the character, I can't simply m move this item um, back. I have to move meshes first. So I sort of have to place my meshes such that they, they, they fit the, um, the, the center of gravity point on the Z axis, and then I can go from there. So let's try. I'm going to again select all the meshes and it um, doesn't really matter if it's component mode or item mode. Uh, I can do item mode and just move it back and forth until I get my center of gravity um, placed well in the side view. I don't really care about the front view because it's on the axis already, right? It's only on the center, so that's fine. Okay, so let's say that this is, that's good. And then what I want to do is, um, I want to actually take advantage of the way this mesh is built. It's got all those uh, sphere, um, models here for joints and to make my life easier when fitting to this um, to this mesh, fitting rig to this mesh, uh, I can simply just um, snap, sort of snap my guide to, to this um, to these spherical joints. But in order to do that, I need to have the pivot points at the center. Uh, right now, you know, if I select any of the spheres and, you know, see that the, 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 the center of the pivot is, is completely off. So I can quickly fix that by, again, selecting all the meshes and then using the edit um, center to bounding box center command. And that should snap nicely, all the centers nicely. 
So now, as you can see, if I select any of these joints, the center is nicely at the center of the sphere, and that's going to be perfect for our uh, fitting purpose. Let's move on with fitting then. So I'll start with the with the spine, and here first. Uh, Let's place, let me place the center of gravity around it here. Then I will need to place the, uh, the hips sort of uh, rotation point or the first spine joint. Then the second one, I'm, I'm basically placing them right where those segments start, the mesh segments. So here goes the chest. And let me see from the side view. Um, it's always best if the spine is sort of a, a more like a straight line. So here, uh, even perfect straight lines, I think it should if you, it should work fine. Okay, so here's my spine and the center of gravity, and now let's move on to the head uh, and neck. So neck is going to be around here, and the head, let's say something like this. Okay. And I can move on to legs, or to actually one leg, because it's only enough to fit just one side, the other is symmetrical. So for this to, to, to do it quickly, I'm going to set my drop action to much position. And we'll drag and drop uh, my guides onto the, the ball joints, just like I mentioned. So those three are fine. Uh, it's good a good practice to disable this drop action as soon as you're done with it, just so it, you don't leave it hanging, because you know sometimes it can really surprise you and do some unexpected action uh, if you forget that you have it on. So that's what I did here. So here's my foot, and then there are two more points to fit for the leg, and this is the heel point and the foot tip. So the heel point is almost fine, you just need to get them down to be to rest on the ground. And for the foot tip, I'm going to move it a little bit closer here to the foot. We are moving on to the arm. And with the arm, just like with the leg, drop action to much position and uh, drag and drop. Just be sure you drop onto the right, onto the right object. Okay, and then just the hand right there. That's fine. I can do fingers quickly a little bit too, although they will require a bit more work here. Actually, for the I think for the for the farm I'm gonna do this automatic snapping. Okay, so for now, first, just like I said, we're gonna disable the match position just so we don't forget about it. And I'm going to check before going to fingers. I'm going to check up on the shoulder because I think yeah, I, I would like it to have have it sort of on the same level as arm. Okay, so that's most of the work done, just fingers are left. So let's try with fingers now. I'm going to do index and middle first, since they are a bit easier, so I will zero out their uh, rotation. And that leaves us with the thumb, which is usually the hardest one. So first I'd like to uh, rotating it on the z-axis and you're looking at those green arrows here I'm, I'm trying to align it with the mesh so just because you know this is those green arrows they show you the direction in which the, the finger will be bending so it's important to align it with your mesh. Okay, so let's say that this is good enough. Now we can apply this guide and move to the assembly context and see that the rig is fitting the mesh nicely now. So let's switch to the rig management tools now. And actually let me switch, go quickly to animate and hide the retargeting skeleton. We don't need it now. Go back here and hide the, uh, I don't need to see plugs and sockets and bind skeleton, just the controllers. So I only want to really see the controllers. And now I can just have a look how the controllers fit um, the character. And I can see that some of them are too small, some of them too big. 
So let's adjust it. I can pick up a controller and use the Resize Controllers Drawing tool to change the size of a, of a given controller. The rig is ready now, but my meshes are not really attached to it at this point. So let's let's do that. I'm going to the meshes context, and since I'm not going to weight any of these meshes, they will be just the rigid segments that get attached to rig joints. Um, I can use rigid meshes in uh, ACS3, and these are uh, the rigid meshes are precisely that the meshes that you want to move with the rig and what the, you want them to move it with the rig, but you do not want to deform them. The typical workflow here is to grab the mesh and drag and drop it onto the relevant joint to um, attach it to the rig. And as you can see, it, um, it shows up here on the rigid meshes list. But in this case, since all my segments are uh, matching the, the joint placement so nicely, I can try actually doing this automatically. So here's in um, auto attach uh, command that will try to go through every mesh I selected and match it with the closest uh, joint. So here it did the job. I can now uh, switch to animate context and see that if I grab this controller and move around, it looks like uh, it's all working. Let's put some motion on this rig to see if it's really working. So. First, I'm going to show the retargeting skeleton and hide the bind skeleton. I don't need it. Then I'm going to show my uh, the skeleton with the motion from Mixima. And retargeting with ACS3 is really easy. All I have to do is grab the, the hips item from the Mixima skeleton. Um, the idea is to grab the item that has both position and rotation uh, keyframes. So there's only usually one uh, with uh, in the motion capture uh, skeleton. So this is the one you need to select and then simply hit initialize and wait for ACS to do its job. As you can see, ACS matched both skeletons. I can leave the setup mode to preview the motion. You won't see it on the mesh yet, but this blue skeleton is your preview. So if it's all looking good enough, I can simply bake the motion um, into a new action. ACS is going to create new action and put uh, this motion into that action. Okay, it looks like it's done. So I can hide the mi Mixum skeleton. I can uh, hide the retargeting skeleton and just have a look. The next step is Im improve this animation by using rig controllers and animate either over uh, the retargeted motion or to replace the retargeted motion. But that's uh, that's for the next part. Um, still, there's one quick fix we can do. As you can see, the, the farms are not quite right. So let me quickly go in there and uh, try to fix that. Okay, so let's see if it's any better. Seems to be a bit better. So cool. So we've got a uh, character rigged and with some motion on top of it, done with ACS in uh, 20 minutes. Yum, yum.